You should also be proud to mention that our podcast, What the Reading Podcast, actually made number two under the books and heart category in Nigeria. Woo! That's exciting. Oh, yeah, no. Drum roll. Guys, I think Drum roll. <laughs> I think we posted that on our Instagram page. If you're not following us, here yeah, is your cue to do that. Uh, the title of the book in focus today is "She Tell Them, Tell Them, Tell Them, Tell Them." Please leaving the time up. Bye. I go J I imokwede, and then buying a bank in Africa. At first, I was like, yeah. oh, "This is quite an interesting title." Yeah. What does you know? A tamak and I love the to sunset the too. Like that element is worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's a, a very, one. very, it's a, it's a good work. She so left him out on the tarmac, <laughs> and then she just watched as the aircraft, you know, flew over. And one thing that you know resonates mm-hmm. from what he said, you know, out of that incident was never again would he be left on the tarmac. Accomplished and successful people who serve as role model in our society shouldn't wait till the uh, retirement before they take time to you know tell their stories. There's absolutely nothing as good as a story told in motion. First of a Christian before I'm a business person, blah blah blah. <laughs> and you almost think that it's just a female thing or just an Instagram thing. But reading a book like even you know, up and child, seeing you know. how Ike is unashamed about his faith and talks about how he feels that there were so many incidents and events that played out that he would never accrue to love. Tell us about it. Oh yeah, so um, for for me with the book, one of the many things that um, stood out is all of the stories he told about most of their mergers and acquisitions. Praying and working hard should go hand in hand and it should be like a 50-50% thing. It's like you trying to catch a boss, right? And you pray in your heart that God should make you get to the boss on time so you don't miss it. And you don't just leave it at praying, you run like your life depends on it and make yep. sure that you are the bus station or bus the bus station. stop on time. Mm-hmm. So, because God will not come down from heaven and make the angel or angel Gabriel stand in front and stop the bus from moving. You have to do your own path. And I think that is one thing we should learn that this generation should begin to invite more, like me inclusive. I remember during the early days of running Roving Height, my business back then, how <laughs> it was one of the craziest things I've ever done. Hey, you. Welcome to the What Reading Book Podcast, the no boring zone where we get you all excited about books that are worth reading. On the What Reading Podcast, you get some unbiased take on books, juicy scoops of what runs through the minds of your favorite author. You can call us your virtual book connoisseurs that help you filter through the many books out there and let you know the ones worth reading. On this podcast, we talk about different book genre. We do not discriminate from fiction to non-fiction, poetry, biographies, memoirs, you name it. So long as it is written by an author of African descent and project check our very own authentic african stories you can count us in so welcome on board and thank you for tuning in we hope you enjoyed the show the show Hi guys, you know, welcome to another edition of the Water Reading Podcast. It's good to have you guys here and, you know, just exciting that, you know, you've joined us for the last three episodes. We're on the fourth now and it's quite an interesting book one review. Well, interesting for as many people that are interested in learning about the story of an entrepreneur that has gone on to build one of the biggest brands in not just Nigeria, in Africa. And just learning one or two things about his journey and how he has gone ahead to do all of that. Some of the pitfalls that he encountered and now just share in a bit of his success. Toby, how are you doing today now? Hi, Shay. I'm all right. How are you delaying your response initially? I am doing very well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I have to, because I need to carry you that up. <laughs> this is one of the hardest <laughs> things I've done in recent times. Like, who would have thought that <laughs> podcasting, you know, would be this tasking, if I do say so. Like, not been beans at all. Perhaps it would have been easier if we walk from a studio or something and we're in the same location. But yeah, we're winging it. It's the fourth episode and it's quite commendable that we've come this far and we can't thank you guys enough for sticking with us. We should also be proud to mention that our podcast, What the Reading Podcast, actually made number two under the books and heart category in Nigeria. Woo! 
that's exciting oh, no. drum so roll guys i think drum roll <laughs> I think we posted that on our Instagram page. If you're not following us, here is your cue to do that. And it's also worthwhile to mention that this is our first nonfiction book. And I'm so looking forward to this one because the author is someone that I admire a great deal. And without keeping you guys waiting any further, the title of the book in focus today is so you tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, please. Living the tarmac. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. Okay. Aye, Aye. 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 Mokwede. Mokwede. Yes. So you yes. know one thing that I find if you quite don't interesting know, about I this book, you. first of all, is the cover page. And it's, it just yeah. it just looks like a lot of, you know, um, a lot is happening on it. I can see a young boy with his, mm-hmm. what should I call it, a portmanteau or suitcase. Or <laughs> and just, just looking at an aircraft, you know, just uh, go on into the horizon and then try mm-hmm. to live in the tarmac and then buy a bank in Africa. At first, I was like, yeah. oh, this is quite an interesting title. Yeah. What does you know? A and I love the sunset to the too. Like that element is worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's a, a very, one. very, it's a, it's a good work. I've never even bothered to find out who did the cover art. Actually, that'd be interesting to know. Yeah, but anyways, the cover uh, actually tells a million stories. Yeah, and you would definitely get to find out the inspiration or the story behind that cover, the image, yeah, shared and design, and all and the key setting. element in it when you read the first few chapters when you read the first few chapters of the book it will just hit you because i mean it's a book by one of the most powerful or most inspiring businessmen in africa and then you have like a small boy <laughs> a small boy exactly with a big boy <laughs> on the cover <laughs> You know, so I think it's worthwhile to just dive into the story very quickly, let you guys in on what actually inspired that cover. Shay, do you want to tell our people? Like, yeah, well, the cover, point? inspiration from what the author indicated is just a story from his childhood while he was in secondary school, federal government college, Kaduna, yeah. and his mom, you know, couldn't. Mm-hmm. One of the unity wasn't. schools. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so he was at the airport, you know, trying to get a flight back home. And then while at the airport, I think Nigeria has always been chaotic, let's be frank. Mm-hmm. And even all the way back then, sometime <laughs> in the 70s. Nigeria Airways, uh, 1970s. Yeah, he was waiting to board yeah. in Nigeria and Airways flight. And all of a sudden, there was chaos. Everybody was trying to get in on the flight. Even, you know, even some of those that didn't have scrambled the for seats. Scrambled for seats and... Yeah. Guess what? The aircraft was filled mm-hmm. up. And I think the airline sold more tickets than the seats they had available, which is yeah, ridiculous. Apparently. So again, well, when we talk about worry, worry, like it's not today. It's been <laughs> happening years ago. <laughs> Crazy. I'm with you, So they left him out on the tarmac <laughs> and then he just watched as the aircraft you know, flew over. And one thing that you know resonates mm-hmm. from what he said, you know, out of the incident was never again would he be left on the tarmac. I just wonder sometimes that you know, was it on that day that he made that resolve and continued to hold on to that resolve or it was, you know, as he got older because in the book he references that fact that whenever he's, you know, at the brink or whenever he's at the brink of, you know, trying to achieve something or, you know, just trying to outmose some competition, mm. he always uses that line to say, oh, here again, it appears that it's going to be left on the tarmac and then he reminds himself that never again will I be left on the tarmac and yeah. that just serves as some motivation but that seems like very good motivation I'm trying to look for a childhood story that can motivate me now from my own personal life defining like, story <laughs> well, well, I, I don't know perhaps we are privileged to ask him that question directly I'm sure when the incident or that particular event played out he probably never imagined that it would be such a defining resolution in even in his adulthood uh, would serve a big purpose as an entrepreneur. So again, um, there are key events that happen to us consciously and unconsciously that just leave very indelible marks in our personality and just what we are the other inspires in many years to come. So yeah, for me, I also feel that the book is quite a good one. I was really intrigued when I found out that it, it was actually writing a book. 
I think the book was released in 2021. It was last year. Even though, yeah, according to him in the intro, he mentioned that he had written the book since 2015 but for two reasons. One which he only disclosed and he said the other reason he will probably tell him a future autobiography. He decided to hold back from releasing it after finishing the book in 2015. And I'm personally inspired by the fact that I took the bold step to actually share his very defining entrepreneurial story because there are very few businessmen in Nigeria, in Africa, that, that actually take time to chronicle their, you know, their trajectory. So oftentimes, just leave us with stories of, you know. The is the grace of God. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you that how did you how did you blow? How did you do it? It was God. They hardly go into oh, the God. details. I, I I would really love to read, for example, an Aliko Dangote memoir, for instance, one that actually dives into details on what I'm sure that would be sold out from the one behind many of the of course, absolutely. But hey, I think accomplished and successful people who serve as role model in our society shouldn't wait till the uh, retirement before they take time to you know tell their stories. There's absolutely nothing as good as a story told in motion. I strongly believe that there's actually power in chronicling your story even as it's unfolding right before the eyes of your you know of your audience. And so here is to more memoirs more book written by people that will greatly admire and people that would continue to inspire generations to come. So, Amen. leaving the tarmac here, yeah? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, leaving the tarmac, Shay, tell us about what stood out for you in the book. I know there are so many things and there's anything I thought that jumps right at you in the first few pages of the book is how principled and diligent Ike is, and even the few people that have been privileged to work with him closely attest to his commitment and doggedness and hard work. And he attributes the bulk of every single thing he has achieved to hard work. And of course, the Almighty, which I find very, very admirable, if I just say so, because it's not today that you see Instagram. <laughs> Entrepreneurs say, I saw what Skit recently by John. Yeah, shout out to the guy, by the way, where he was saying something about how when they invite female, that's just an aside anyway. If you uh, invite female entrepreneurs to come and share their story, perhaps at the conference or summit, and the first thing they start talking about is quoting scriptures. And they talk about how I'm first of all a Christian before I'm a business person, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And you almost think that it's just a female thing or just an Instagram thing, but reading a book like even you know, up and child, seeing you know. how Ike is unashamed about his faith and talks about how he feels that there were so many incidents and events that played out that he would never accrue to luck. That there were so many accidents of events that it could only be the work of the, the Almighty of the Sovereign One and so Mm. So that's why how he puts mm. it, like it's the whole spiritual thing, and is yeah. So again, that really really <laughs> warmed his personality up to me. If that makes any sense, and I feel that is quite commendable, and it's one book that I would totally recommend anybody running a business in a crazy clan like Africa to read. So um, we'll quickly dive into a few key elements or chapters that actually stood out in the book, Shay. Um, what do you think? I well, love I, uh, how um, for me, we are both ex-bankers, right? <laughs> so, of course, this particular I, I story would sure. not be, you know, really yours. Yeah, I would put actually worked at the same bank at different points in our lives, which is weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was at the end of this year, somewhere, is it Abuja? You're making big booms. The orange yeah. guy. Tell us about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, for, for me with the book, one of the many things that um, stood out is all of the stories he told about most of the mergers and acquisitions, you know, as a the kid is young maker in, you know, in that bank, I saw the, the journey, mm -hmm. right? And I kind of try to relate it with, you know, the reality that we have with, you know, many fintechs and how, oh, yes, there's a fintech explosion. But mm. now there's almost, you know, a point where, uh, you know, there's, there's a need to so, sort of separate the boys from the men in terms of, oh, is this business yeah. a business? 
and all of the you know, mm-hmm. shenanigans of you know just looking at business from not just from a raise you know something that happens in the fintech space now is you know there are raises so people announcing you no know, x you know seed round yeah you know, seed round seed round series a series market. b yeah. and all of those fundings mm-hmm. when you read this book you realize how you know the grew access bank from you know just is from Okay, they bought over, you know, a small bank and how, you know, with deliberate efforts of yeah. you know, keeping their ears on the ground, with deliberate efforts of, you know, just um, trying to challenge some policies or, or you know, play around some policies, uh, you know, they, they started to, you know, buy up, buy over other banks, you know, they started to take advantage of maybe some policy reforms and all of that. And here we are, you know, as I went yeah. was writing this book, they are not even talked about you didn't have the privilege of writing about you know the bio of diamond bank for instance so that means that the access bank yes. of today yes. is not as big as the mm-hmm. access bank that even wrote about but that was also a big bank because of all Absolutely. of the acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions one thing that stands out for me is how it always talks about you know preparedness you know it, it talked yeah. about you know when the, the cbn called for a meeting you know for um, and he realized that there were just two ceos in that in that meeting for instance where they were going to talk about you know setting up mm-hmm. settlement banks and stuff like that and how oh they weren't as at the time after yeah. you know even with their best efforts at that time they couldn't meet up but they were able to just, you know, create some sort of framework that ensured that they were not swallowed up by by the sharks. Again, that was one moment where I felt like it was going to mm-hmm. be left on the tarmac, but it was never left on the tarmac. So, yeah, yeah there, there are lots Absolutely. of you know, incidents that a young entrepreneur should really look out for in this book, really. I honestly feel that a lot can happen in 12 years. I feel that within, between the space of 12 years, they literally transform and change the trajectory of a bank that seemingly wasn't in quote that promising, was just there. It didn't even, I think from the book, you mentioned that they were in the last quarter of the 90 banks that were existing then in 20, 2002 or 2001. And within the space of 10 to 12 years, you could literally see what they did. And it was part of the things, the audacious promises they made to the board when they were going to, you know, embark on this particular big dream to buy the bank that they were literally going to transform the bank is five years. Who does that? Mm-hmm. Who goes right ahead to, you know, <laughs> promise, overpromise. It almost felt like overpromising, but boy, they over delivered and blew literally everybody's mind. And it also accrued the excitement and the energy and dedication and hard work they put into it stemming from that and the learning rush that comes along with, you know, doing something crazy. Mm-hmm. As an yeah. entrepreneur, I do have to take some measure of craziness for you to you know, pursue something out of the ordinary, something that has not been done before. I love how you talked about so many events, critical things that happen at different times that actually inspired those moves. There was one of the books that he recommended or he mentioned, he read like three times, or was it three or five times, that one of his... Um, Someone very close to him actually recommended it to buy house, the insider's guide to building your own business. As soon as I read that particular book, saw that title in the book, I had to have it in my TBR list and make sure that I had it in my shelf. Because, I mean, if a book has actually inspired, it's written by Rick, something, something, I can't remember this one, but the last thing, but it's definitely a book worth checking out. And imagine reading that after before or during the course of reading that book, he was also undergoing like a three months program at Harvard Business School. And you mm-hmm. know, he had a close friend. And it's also very it also alludes to the importance of having the right relationship in your life and oh, having yeah, people yeah, that you that's... Know, jive the same level with you. Look at mm-hmm. the synergy between him and uh, um, Herbert Wigwe. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's really a book that I honestly feel every entrepreneur should read and it would kind of validate you and the story would literally resonate with a serious entrepreneur, someone who actually wants to create long-lasting businesses. We are looking at, yeah, long-lasting it's not just value. a side hustle, you are looking at a business <laughs> that you can pass on to generations yeah, even, even to come. Even if it's a side hustle, you know, a side hustle. Very strong, like, basically. Yeah, the side hustle can also, side also you know, it will make scale, you want it can be to, up. to scale, to want to imagine endless possibilities that you're probably not, you know, exploring right now. And you talk about how this juice was just flowing and pumping through him and 
there's always this nudge when you're at the verge of birthing something. It's coming from my own personal experience as an entrepreneur. If it's something that you are, there's this huge nudge in your heart and you've actually spotted an opportunity and a problem that you think you have a solution for, there's always that energy. There's always that excitement and juice that will be popping through your blood. And if you don't do it, like... It's almost as if the universe is nudging and pushing you and eventually every other thing would align. Exactly. Would definitely not exactly. Or we can go on and on about the many challenges. It almost felt like after it crosses one or two, another one would always show up. Mm-hmm. And I love how, I don't want to release or put out so many spoilers anyways, but good thing this is not I think fiction. we should actually, not, so that, you know, People can, can see reasons <laughs> to look out for the book. Yeah. Because, a, um, a lot has for, changed in the banking sector in Nigeria. I honestly wish we could dive into details. There was a particular man, I think I've gotten his name that I mentioned in the book, that was really reverent in that sector, that was very principled. It's someone that it was the one that was supposed to approve him and his deputy MD, um, Herbert Wigwig. Yeah, that was in the CBN, right? The MD and yeah, in the CBN. And if he didn't yeah, get his the approval, the man actually lingered about a year or more. It's not Joseph in Malam. I can't remember the name, but he, I mean, if you don't have his approval, it would, it would not happen. And again, when you have people as principled as that at the helm of affairs of a an apex bank, of course, Maybe perhaps that was why the Nigeria economy thrived or was in a better place back then. And we must also commend and give a big shout out to the Obasanjo administration. I keep saying it, it's my personal bias, but I feel it was one of the best things that ever happened in Nigeria so far. It's one of the best leaders we've had as a country. And I love how his administration, during his administration, was surrounded by the best prince and oh, yeah. so many we policy reforms were you know, introduced during that period. And I even talked about how, you know, he would always tag along for meetings with while he was at GT Bank with Tayo and then Minoko, and he would have like close contacts with those people and see how deals are brokered. Yeah, of blessed memory, and you know, it's something. And again, I I wish we could bring back those days, or we could begin to have even bigger and better version of such play out right now. But yeah, it, it's actually a very detailed book. And it was also high opening. If you're looking for a book that probably gives you a tip of the iceberg of what actually happens, the business of running a bank, a successful yeah, at the one, decision making that. level of, a, of, uh, of such a large institution. Yes, at the very top, yeah, at the top level, one that actually pays keen attention to performance, keen attention to systems and structures and putting structure in place one that i also understand the role that people and attracting the best talent actually plays then this is definitely the book for you there are no magic or there are no gimmicks to these things and again it's either you go big or you go home that's the <laughs> things the key lessons yeah go big or go home book. Like, you really need to be very daring and, you know, if you're persuaded about something, just give it your all. And sometimes in the process of trying to build something long-lasting, something would have to give. You have to make very huge sacrifices. I love how we didn't sugarcoat the fact that during the space of those 10, 12 years where he was building that dream. It was really driving and building. Business. It was absent. Yes. Like it was, uh, in quote, an absentee <laughs> father and the wife was asked to make that sacrifice <laughs> and be at the forefront <laughs> well, in court. at the home And how it also affected level, health and all of that. Well. Yeah. You yeah. know, you mentioned, so again, you mentioned things, uh, it, nothing good how at some point in time, at all. Yes, how at some point in time you had a major health scare. You had to be flown out by an air ambulance yeah. to, to receive further mm-hmm. attention abroad. And so, yes, while it's good to desire all of the good things that it has now, and, you know, for the god went people, yeah. there's also a lot of hard work that goes in. There's also a lot of sacrifice. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and impact that it also if has. If you don't on have a godfather, family. which was something he kept on mentioning. Yeah, if you don't have a yeah, godfather, exactly. or you are, you, I mean, it's, 
<laughs> relatively humble beginnings. His parents were both civil servants, and it was quite principled that he didn't want to take crooked means or ways to you know, build his wealth or his business. And so, again, there were several compromises he had to make and sacrifices. And so, the only thing he's ever known in his life is put the do the grind, like put in the hard work, grind hard. And then, what question I asked myself while reading really this book is. And, <laughs> what, what are the chances yeah. that a young man in Nigeria today, or young men, say 30, 32, 33, if I can hear, buy a bank? Not even in this Instagram generation. <laughs> well, I think that we don't, our dreams are not audacious, or they've just taken a different fashion. So, an average person who even can boast of the funding would rather want to put money or invest in other um, less risky business ventures and then people are not even keen to build businesses that you know would last a lifetime or there's this mantra or this thing going around now where people advocate for oh minimal effort maximum enjoyment i don't have anything against (laughs) those stuff like (laughs) i fear for our generation and how we in quotes undermine the place of hard work and trust me we are planning to build something meaningful there's no sugar coating it though you have to make sacrifices you have to work hard i'm not saying that i'm not undermining the place of grace but there's a role that you know there's something that grace needs to breathe on there's something that you know I mean, the scripture even talks that about the fact that faith to without work is dead. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I watched the snippet of Kerry Washington talk about how she, I think she was trying to draw an illustration of how, you know, praying and working hard should go hand in hand. And it should be like a 50-50% thing. It's like you trying to catch a boss, right? And you pray in your heart that God should make you get to the bus on time so you don't miss it and you don't just leave it at praying you run like your life depends Absolutely. on it and make yep. sure that you are at the bus station or bus at the station. bus stop on time mm-hmm. so because god will not come down from heaven and make the angel or angel gabriel stand in front and stop the bus from moving you have to do your own path and i think that is one thing we should learn that this generation should begin to imbibe more i mean inclusive i remember during the early days of running roving height my business back then our <laughs> It was one of the craziest things I've ever done. Find the passion and the excitement kept me going. But I look back now and I'm like, again, building such strong foundation didn't come easy. There were weekends where I didn't even have the luxury of going for one and one and where when I had a nine to five and I was building something on the side, you know, and the weekend is just the only period I have to put 100% into the business. And so mm. I, I remember how some of the few gray hair I already have in, in my my young <laughs> age were as a result of worrying <laughs> over logistics, chasing up dispatch riders and, you know, trying to crack how else to make our customers happy and hire the right set of people. So trust me, I, I, I could relate when he talked about some of the health scares he had, some of the sacrifices he had to make at the home front. There will be a time you have to make a choice. After either pick between, you know, self gratification and you know just going in pursuit yeah, of something what that, you um, strongly believe in, and it takes a measure of craziness to do that. She, I feel like entrepreneurs, actually, especially those in you. Africa, so they're, they're, not, that, they're not normal. Um, one of the CEOs, just, one of the bank was, CEOs that I respect says and he talks about when he was he mm-hmm. was asked at the gathering what he thinks about work life balance and you know his response was there's really no balance. <laughs> you either cho- you either choose work or you choose Where's life. This? Right. Um mm-hmm. so you know think about yeah. it like a liver. You're trying to balance a liver. It's never a straight a straightly balance. Mm-hmm. It's gonna t- it always has to tilt towards um one end. You know, just to um further add you know add to what you had said about that perception of minimum effort, maximum enjoyment. You know, um, everybody wants to walk like an ant mm-hmm. and eat like an elephant. In fact, 
we even pray about it, you know, when sometimes you go to your religious houses in church or in the church, you know, or the mosque, and there's, you know, the prayer of, oh, you know, favor of our labor, which is fine, you know, really, as much oh. as possible, you you really, because a lot of people, because if it's, it's my fine, hard work, she. you know, the hardest workers are not necessarily, in literal terms, you know, um, I, I would say that those that work hardest in terms of muzzle now, you know, muzzle efforts, are not necessarily the ones that get the most reward, mm-hmm. right? But again, the truth course, is, you have to um, work smart. Work is still, yeah, work, you know, work smart, work hard is still, is still needed. So, Toby, which of the stories that, you know, I, I shared in this book really uh, resonates with you? Apart from, you know, I know you've mentioned a few, but can you just pick out like any specific ones that you think, uh, you know, our listeners will, should just look out for and could serve as, as great um, foundations for them, even as they build their businesses or even lives as well. Yeah. Um, so I've got a few excerpts here that I think will serve as the background or the basis for what I'm going to say is stood out for me in this book. I'm just going to try to read it. It's from page 68. And this is my effort or my attempt to nudge you to actually grab a copy of this book. Of course, it's available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold in Nigeria. Um, so I can't remember the specific paragraph here, but it says something about we also knew that we were willing and able to work very, very hard. I'm a firm believer in God and his power to make all things possible. I know that he had looked at these two young men, listened to their plans, and chose to make them a reality. I say this knowing, as I do, that while we are very capable, several of the milestones that you will read about in this book did not happen of our making. There are too many unexplained coincidences, accidents of timing, events of chance that can only be attributed to the Almighty. So now this particular excerpt is like, it really hits home for me. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I love how it was just a perfect balance of what I was trying to say earlier about how grace or the rule of the Almighty does not undermine the rule or the part that you have to play in your own story. And, you know, making sure that your dream or your vision become comes alive. And I honestly feel that this book is not merely applicable to entrepreneurs alone. I believe that there's a new crop of people that are even way more entrepreneurial that actually find themselves in organizations that fosters what they now call intrapreneurship. And so, again, it's about yeah. making sure you show for yourself and your excellence in everything you do, wherever it is that you find yourself, whether in the workplace or running your own show. And so, for me, what stood out in this part is how he acknowledges the role God played in his story and how much he also had to work. And um, in the later chapters of the book, we'll come to see those events of chances that he talked about how they played out. For instance, even though God was behind them or God was in support of what they were doing in code because, I mean, they eventually succeeded, there were still some hurdles they had to face. <laughs> I'm not trying to take people to church right now, but come on. There were moments <laughs> where I approached well, I colleagues <laughs> at his former place of work at GT Bank, City Bank, and... There were so many pushbacks. Like, why would people want to dish something that they they can see is actually like working? You know, a time tested career path mm-hmm. that is already Const- set ahead for them. Like, even even more to that jump the ship and gave come. him that feedback. Yeah, when he was you know, out. and mm-hmm. and so there were several pushbacks, right? But those events, I I believe that there's a God that rules in the affairs of man. There's there's the God that actually nudges the hearts of people and change, turns the hearts of kings and queens in the favor of those that believe and trust in him. And so, again, um, that particular excerpt that just goes to show that sometimes when, you, it's not even sometimes, every time you have very big and audacious dream, it would never make any sense to um, to you as a visionary, but you just have to take that leap of faith and give things a chance make sure that you speak yeah. to the right people, even though it might seem that some of those things are out of reach, but when you attempt and you make an effort, then grace will breathe on it, then the Almighty will come to his role in it as well. 
but you can't be a defeat, you can't not try at all and begin to imagine that things will happen. No, you still need to actually make the effort. So that part really spoke to me in different dimensions and perhaps because I have my shared sentiments about, you know, how I want my business to come off. And okay, so personally, I think why it really resonated with me was because that is when people ask questions like, okay, so what makes your brand so different? Why is it that, you know, Roving Night everywhere? Why you guys are not the only bookstore? Even before we started the business, there were other people that were already in that space. There's still good, there's still still good facts shops, about Roving Night, you know. Yeah. Books will exactly. take you everywhere. And there are times when they ask that question. For me, my, there are days when I'm like, if I come forward to you as the day I come forward and take glory or want to say that is because we do this, because we did that. <laughs> it's a big lie it is a big lie there were so many factors like again got put, bringing the right people fire catchers people that dream catchers people so much believe in what we're trying to do and eventually made it happen this is not a podcast about it yeah so i, 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 I think um, it just reminds me of, of, of a book by malcolm happening. reminds me of a book by gladwell, malcolm gladwell. Yeah, where it talks, uh, you know, yeah. outliers, and you know, talks David about Angulaya. where yeah, where it talks about you know, outlying that factors guy, so. that that people don't talk about, you know, as it relates to success. Right. And I think that, and I think that is something that also applies in this case because, um, like yeah. I like I mentioned earlier, uh, in you know, in current day Nigeria, what are the chances of um, a 32, 33, 34 year old? Even banker yeah. being in that kind of position, yeah. right? You know, um, mm-hmm. the average. So for those that know the cadres in banking, the average thirty-two, thirty-three year old, uh, maybe a senior banking officer, tops maybe, and that's yeah. for those that SBU. have had good careers. That's if right? you're lucky. Yeah. And your yeah, group head likes that, you. That, that I've had, <laughs> Let's ever go there. I've had good they know how to play so that yeah, politics maybe, well. Maybe between an SBO. <laughs> Max, oh tops, maybe best case. What it is, maybe you are best like, case. Maybe you are an assistant manager or deputy manager, and you know at that kind of position, uh, you know, being uh, well, never say never. To be honest, uh-huh. but um, it just feels like you know the game is already tilted, and you know the steps, the the, the, the steps that they had to go through, you know, to to the yeah. top was quite different from you know, you know all of the steps that has been created mm-hmm. currently yes. in, in the system. There are some other banks that even yeah. have like yeah. uh, for one level, they are like two steps on one level and it's just quite ridiculous. So there are outlying factors that you know must have contributed yeah, to their success very at that time. Rigid and all that. Uh, they had privilege. Yes, actually they did. Uh, but what while one is not taking um, away the work the work that they did and the fact that they really put in the work, uh, yeah. one, one would also say that, yeah, there they were outlying factors. But for me, one of the things that um, that kind of stood out, you, you mentioned a little, a little on it, but I think it's something that we also sort of have to emphasize is the, is the place of, you know, co vision yeah. And, you know, when it talks about how, you know, what mm. the relationship with him and Herbert has been, you know, coming from GT Bank, and there's some level of, you know, mutual trust, mutual respect that, you know, it talks about how there's so, yeah. you know there's blind faith, blind faith in him knowing that Habad has got his back yeah. any day, yeah. and I'm sure that there's also that blind faith that Habad has that yeah. oh I just has got my back any day, and that that alone, you know, sometimes yeah. it can be lonely at the top, you know, just that, the, the murky waters of business, and yeah. you're just there grinding hard, you know, pushing hard, and all of that, but. Knowing that there's a co-pilot yeah. that you're flying with it makes the you know the journey yeah. much easier, or it makes the journey makes the pain more bearable Preach because it. it's not just you that is <laughs> bearing that pain. Yeah. So, um, uh, w- one thing that a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people, you know, do not uh, well, especially in this generation, is this is a question of what what do you do with your friendships or right? what are we doing with our friendships? Are we just um, you know having friendships for you know? Hanging out, yeah. You know, Forging meaningful rules. friendship is very, very important. Yeah, like yeah. So you meet friends you, that you your shouldn't just place, end up being enjoyment just, and the soft life for you guys. That exactly. So are you guys you just know, going out to eat fish and, just and chatting you know, go out to restaurants and just, travel? <laughs> but are you guys <laughs> or sending the coolest kids the on next... Instagram to each other via DM? <laughs> <laughs> or are you, are guys, you know, paying attention to the building, latest trends and, something yeah so yeah. I, I, I think i think it's very important to surround 
yourself with people of like mind. Yeah. Like what we have going right here. Yeah. Limau. <laughs> You know, <laughs> uh, get out. I didn't know when I met Shayi, how many years ago was that? I met Shayi on Instagram, by the way. So, talking about like a real life experience of this, this is like a story for another day. Did you meet, did you meet me when I met you? Details. Which one? But yeah, okay, okay. Let's pay them the details for now. But again, it's very important exactly. to make very meaningful connections with people and make sure that if you as someone that is a we're going, if, sorry, we don't know what a we're going is. Make sure you are working with someone that is a gigi bread. So that way, there's that synergy, there's that alignment, and you know, you are just jollofing and you know, jiving together. It's jollof rice and dodo. You are complementing each other and all of that. And that is not to reduce relationships or networking to you know just the benefits that are in it. But whether we like it or not. Um, there are some relationship that beneath every relationship I've thought there's that transactional element. And so we are all very um, human beings in quotes are kind of relatively selfish beings. And so beneath every mm-hmm. body that you supposedly call your friend, yeah, there's there are benefits to you, there are transactions that happen on that G that probably you're not acknowledging you want to have really what paying attention to. So yeah, Shay, thank you for mentioning that. We could go on and on about this book. Uh, I have a few notes here about how you could see Hike's passion for Nigeria breathe through the book. Oh, and yeah, beyond yeah. just being a successful businessman, is a philanthropist. I know yes. someone very dear to me that has actually benefited from I um, Foundation and what he actually stands for. I know, for. I know, I know. He's very passionate about policy <laughs> and governance, which is like <laughs> public policy. Like, you mean? That is very, very smart. Just give public policy uh, and go- uh, good governance and he's got um, Africa Initiative for Governance where they provide support for some of the brightest people and sponsor them on scholarships to Oxford University yeah, in the public sector. for masters in public policy programming. And they also put together capacity building sessions for you know civil servants and try to be that change that we want, that we desire as, you know, at the public service level. And so those are worthwhile, um, what's the name, initiative and laudable things that we all, we've all come to admire hike for. I also love how is not, is not all up in our face or like, like some people share, but it's just in this corner <laughs> and he's making big dream, big moves uh, and he's making things Well, happen. I think that, that's more That's me. my that's dream. More like, me. I don't want of a personality Lifestyle or personal okay. decision, right? But then, like, th- 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 that's me. Let me just be in one court now. That's my dream. Cash out. No, no, no make noise. In fact, let them undermine you and they never see you coming and bam, you just eat them. And then beyond just the things yeah. you're making happen as well, you're also giving back to the society. Not in some random, on undefinable efforts but something that is long term that people this generations to come would eventually reap the you know the outcome of those things. So yeah Shay, this has actually been so, a so very if, if you were to if you were to recommend on on. recommend this book for, for anyone, do you think it, it it's worth reading? Um if you were to say ten over ten, Shay. Yes, I've never <laughs> my sports at all. You can almost tell. Uh, fine, I'm I'm a proponent of a fiction girl anytime, any day. But adulting and running a business as many actually many years ago made me fall in love and see the need to act, really read, you know, other genres. And um, this particular one stood out for me. I remember another book that did it for me and was really close to home with some of the very personal experiences and examples shared in it was um, is this book by Yomi Jemmy Benoit of Cardinal Stones, um, Risk and Return. Yeah, Cardinal Stone really, Partner. You should, definitely, yeah, you should definitely grab that book as well. There are very few, um, what's the name, books from... Af- by Africans that actually tell 
our own success story. And sometimes I know the books by the big names. I, I don't want to mention them, the foreign authors that um, successfully mm-hmm, made mm-hmm. the New York bestseller list are uh, good. But uh, as I began to run my business, I, there was a role contest needed to play. I wanted books that were relatable, books that I could you know, see myself in. And that was very, very mm-hmm. important for me. And so I'm so glad and that some of these resources are beginning to come up and we can't get enough of them. So this is like a major, major plea or public service announcements that more successful business owners or entrepreneurs that have built... Africans, actually. African um, successful business owners. actually. African business owners should actually take time to tell their their story. Yeah and help inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs as well mm-hmm. and problem mm-hmm. solvers. Yeah, so for me, it's a 10 over 10. I would highly recommend if you are serious about, you know, being the change you want to be, if you're serious about social impact, serious about running like a social enterprise or even someone that is focused on helping um, multinationals achieve their big goals and vision. This would really serve you. And we are one of the crazy ones like us. By all means, have this by your bedside and go back to it every time you are faced with a hurdle. And remember that according to the gospel by I budget, hike, smoke a day, <laughs> chapter, <laughs> page, you had this challenge. There was a CBM, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this was what he did. And you would find time-tested principles or, you know, hacks that would, you know, serve you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, now. So I also, I also recommend, I also recommend it. Yeah, yeah, I recommend the book. It's, um, it's really, really a good, a mm-hmm. good, a good read. It's, you learn a lot. You learn about success. You learn about failures. You learn about hard decisions. Uh, I re- I recall mm-hmm. the story wrote about their takeover of um, Intercontinental Bank and all of the issues that came up mm. and you know, they had decisions they had to make. Yeah, you know along along that line, and I can imagine you know the, the level the, the number of sleepless nights and just thinking through some of the decisions they were going to make and and all of that. But so for every young you know uh, interning entrepreneur, for every young business owner, this is the book to read. This is. One that you, I don't mm-hmm. think you leave, you, you drop it without taking very, very valuable nuggets. Yeah, so look out for this book and grab a copy now. How many stars? How many stars, uh, Shay, would you give? Can I give them number? 11? Can I give the book 11 over 10? Oh, that's some <laughs> record breaking rating out there. Like, so this is a lot, guys. This book is 11 over 10 times worth reading and that's it from us on this episode uh you can grab a copy of the book again like we rightly mentioned earlier on on amazon and please we are begging you i've actually switched to my nigeria accent right now <laughs> we need your feedback we need you guys to interact more and let us know what you think about what we're doing it's been beautiful hearing from you so far, but it would help a great deal if you can feel the pulse of your heart and your thoughts concerning the content that we're putting on. Don't just walk up as us, please. Pass this on, share it with your colleague and tell them about the work we did podcast. And that will go a long way in helping us move our ministry forward. Yeah. So guys, thank you, thank you everyone. That's thank it you. from us. Thank you for helping Gee. us. As always, it was beautiful having this chat with you until next time that she we don't know what we're we'll doing yet but yeah. it's also going to be yet another exciting book and i'm looking forward to that time we'll reveal a book that will use every stuff <laughs> i hope that will make well, the back up so, yeah. <laughs> <hope I'm> <laughs> all right guys so how to be here till next time thank, thank you, you so much cheers bye yeah, cheers. <laughs> bye